possible that initially you'll be lucky and they'll all be fairly successfully growing, or some will and some won't. Some may die, there may be some accidents. Um, for example, uh, there's a population of um, protected griffin vultures in the Middle East, and um, in this one area there are only about 20 breeding pairs. And the biologists are trying to nurture them, they're trying to feed them with carcasses, and they're looking, sometimes they even take the eggs out of the nests on cliff faces, and they go and incubate them and then bring the chicks back to raise the probability that they will be incubated successfully. But imagine a storm comes through and blows all the nests off the cliff, and that's the end. So that kind of stochasticity is different. That's called environmental stochasticity. So you've got different kinds of stochasticity that we'll talk about. But there's just the probability of any egg hatching, and you might want to raise that. But in order to work out what's going to happen, uh, just by sheer chance, some animals will die um, at a greater rate than you expect on average. And that will be more evident in small populations than in big populations. So with small populations, you can be lucky that nobody died last year, although we expected 20% of them to die. Great. So that means the population's in better shape now than we expected. So th this becomes important when looking at um, stochastic, uh, when looking at small populations and trying to model what's going to happen. And so with small populations, you don't say, how big will the population be in 10 years? All your questions are couched in terms of probabilities, like, what is the probability that there'll be more than five individuals in the population in 10 years? And if that probability is 95%, then you can feel better if, than if that probability is only 60%. So when you make predictions about small populations, it's not that informative to say the expected number will be 12. What you want to know is the probability that there'll be none. So maybe that the probability that there'll be no individuals is at least 10%. Are you willing to accept that? As opposed to the average will be 12. Because if, you, if I say to you the average is 12, you might say fine. But if I say the probability that there'll be none is 10%, you might say, I don't want to take a 10% chance that there'll be none of these animals left in 10 years. I'm going to do something. So in order to make a decision about doing something, you want to know what the risk is of extinction. So there's these random number functions. And um, you can very easily simulate random variables uh, in NOVA. And that's because you can make this flow equation over here random. You just say this flow equation, random, is going to be equal to, and then when I capitalize R-A-N-D-M, it means I'm calling this random number generator that's going to give me a number between 0 and 1. So every time I call it, I'm going to get a number between 0 and 1. And so I can generate a sequence of numbers between 0 and 1 just by running this model. So we can run the model. Um, here it is. OK. So here's this NOVA model. And I've, I've downloaded all these models for you. So if you have a look at this model, all it does in each time step is, if you can, on, it seems like it's cut off at the top. Yeah, so the top has been cut off, yeah. There. Um, so let me go to this other display format then. Okay. Okay. Um, so now if I open this, you see that it just has the, the flow equation is that what I'm going to calculate in the flow is I'm just going to generate a number there between 0 and 1. Okay? And now all this outcome does is it starts out with a number 0.5, which is the initial number I've chosen, and then the next number it's going to have will be between 0 and 1. And because it's a sequence rather than a stock, it doesn't add it. It just records the new value each time. So with this model, all I expect to get is the random number that I generate each time. So there's uh, some random numbers that I've generated 100 times. And so it has the first values at a half, then the second value, the third value. Unfortunately, it connects up the plot. So it's not really a line. It's just connecting up the consecutive values. If you don't like this, you can look at it in a table. And we'll just get a table of random values. OK, so does everybody understand this model and how simple it is? Um, those of you, some of you may realize that NOVA is a lot more sophisticated than we've been dealing with in the class. And it's got these output pins over here. And so I can run it many times. I see that I've got another. I'm not going to talk about this yet. Has anybody used this, the output pins to make chips? Has anybody done this? Okay. So that's the first model, random, and I just generate random numbers. Now, in the same way that I generate random numbers, I can generate numbers that I draw from a binomial distribution. And in this model, what I'm going to do is I'll show you is that in this um, expression over here, bin event, I just call binomial. Bin event is equal to binomial NP. And over here, N is a number and P is a, a number. So if you have a look over here, I've got a slider for numbers and probability, the number I call N, the probability I've got to call P, and then I take N and P, and then over here, I have this thing that's called bin event, and then I just describe bin event to be a draw from the binomial. So what this term will do is it'll take a binomial distribution, n and p, and it'll draw a number from n and p, from the binomial distribution. And so when I do that, if I set n equal to 10 and p equal to 0.5, then I expect the numbers to go somewhere between 0 and 10. But the no most likely number in this case is 5. But you can see that when I do this, I, I start out initially, I set a, my initial value um, of my stock to be this binomial outcome. And... Um, I'm plotting here both bin event. So I'm plotting the bin event, which is just the drawing of the binomial theorem. And then what I do is I feed the bin event into here. And then this is no longer um, a sequence, but it's a stock variable. So it's adding up all the events. But in adding up all the events, what I do is over here I divide by the number of events so far. So I get the average value so far. So here I accumulate the total number as I keep going. And here I work out its average. And I plot the average. And the average should be 5. But any time I draw, here you can see I got a 3, and then I got a, uh, an 8. It's hard to see what numbers came up here, but you've got to. Um, uh, it's, it's easy to see these numbers in the table. But anyway, just, just to give you a visual view of what's going on. 
So if I go to that, this particular model, there it is. I can run it a number of times. Um, OK. And then also, um, I can uh, put it on order mode, and then maybe I can change the value of p. If I make p smaller, then you'll see that the average will be smaller. Or if I make p bigger, then the average gets bigger. Um, if I make n bigger, oh, I, I got a, I'm out of range. But anyway, you'll see that if you make n bigger, then actually the amount of variance proportionately goes down. So if you look at the amount of variance there, now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it on um, automatic. And you'll see that every time I run, the capture load, exec. Now these are on different scales, so that's why it looks like this. But you'll see that as I make um, n bigger, let's go to a big, let's go to 100, then I'll get a lot less variation. Actually, you don't see it because it's not, it's not going down to zero. This is only between 42 and 45. So if I put this on a scale from zero to 100, you see the variation go down. So this variation is just in a narrow range between um, 42 and 60. OK, so everybody happy so far? Let me close this. OK. So now we've been able to draw from binomial distributions. So there's other kinds of distributions. We've seen the uh, uniform distribution. Now the uniform distribution, or sorry, we've seen the random distribution, but a uniform distribution in which you put uniform x, y, instead of the random distribution chooses values between 0 and 1, where any value is equally likely. The uniform distribution x, y chooses values between x and y, where any value between x and y is equally likely. So that's the same as taking a random distribution and rescaling it so that it doesn't go between 0 and 1, but it goes between x and y. So the relationship between the uniform and the random is just a rescaling of the random so that um, you take the random and you scale it to go between, so you multiply it by y minus x to rescale the width of the interval to y minus x, and then you add x to it to make it start at x, and then it'll go between x and y. You can call a normal distribution, normal AB, which returns a value for the normal distribution with a mean of A and a standard deviation of B. So if you want the value you call to come from a normal distribution, then you write normal AB, where A and B are the mean and standard deviation as input. There's also something called a Poisson distribution. A Poisson distribution just has a single parameter. If you want to read up about these distributions, you can read up about them on Wikipedia or elsewhere. But if you remember, the Poisson distribution came up when we were looking at a particular model. Does anybody remember what that model was? We talked about a Poisson process and a Poisson attack rate, the attack function, yeah. Yeah, the host parasite model. So we were saying that if an individual, um, what proportion of individuals in the population will be attacked once or twice or three times or no times? And we said, okay, there's a mean attack rate. If on average everybody in the population is being attacked A times, where A could be 0.6 or 1.2 because it could be attacked more than once, but let's say A is uh, 0.6. If the attack rate is 0.6, then the Poisson tells you what proportion of individuals in the population won't be attacked, and it's greater than 0.4 because some individuals have been attacked twice, and some individuals have been attacked three times. But those are very, very small proportions. If it's 1.2, then of course uh, more than half the individuals, um, or around half the individuals, are at least being attacked uh, twice. So we can simulate different distributions by using NOVA. Um, so here I'm, I'm simulating three distributions at once. So I've got two values, A and B, and I'm putting these values in with sliders. And then I'm saying the uniform distribution, I've got a uniform distribution there that goes between A and B, and so it's a random 0, 1 multiplied by B minus A, add B to it. And then that gives me a uniform distribution between A and B. Or if I look at this one, I'm calling a normal distribution that, um, sorry, that's just the initial value, the first value I call. It has a normal distribution, and um, it's hard to see what is written in there, but it says normal, and what I've done is I've taken a, and a plus b over 2 to be the mean and a plus b over 2 to be the variance, the standard deviation. So this is, a this is a normal distribution where the mean equals the standard deviation. You can do whatever else you want. You can actually put in a parameter c there that gives you the standard deviation. Or you can di directly put in a mean and variance. I'm just fooling around with two parameters here in the way that I call the population. And here's a question.